guess what two questions I get asked the most. Number one is how to get your flowers to last longer. And number two is how to make your own hand-tied posy or bouquet. I'm Julie from Julie Davis Flower Workshops and Flower Start, the online flower arranging classes. Now, in answer to the first question, you'll need to check out my video from last week when I talked you through five ways that you can get your flowers to last longer. And if you want a bit of a recap, why don't I send you five short emails just to remind you, and you can sign up for that in the show notes underneath the video. When you come to make your own hand-tied posy, a posy if it's small, or perhaps a bouquet if it's slightly larger, you'll want, traditionally, you'll make this with a mix of greenery and flowers. Now, this is a sample bouquet, well, a practice bouquet, and it was made in one of my live classes last week. At the end of class, rather than throwing away the unused greenery, one of the ladies decided to have another go and practice making this bouquet. This is a really good tip to do, especially if the greenery comes from your garden. It means there's no cost to you and you can make something that looks really fantastic. And it looks good because it's got a variety of different kinds of greenery, different colours, textures and forms or shapes. And of course, if you want to add flowers, what kind of flowers should you add? Now, I always suggest that you stick with one colour and you cannot go wrong with green and white. And for this particular class last week, I used a variety of white flowers. I had large headed red, white, I had large headed white roses. And think about using lots of spray materials. They will really be your friend. So they're the materials that are on a single stem, but they branch out. So I used eryngium, a white thistle, and also some lisianthus and some very small headed spray chrysanthemums. And then for a bit of contrast in shape, how about thinking about a spike form as well? I used antirhinums, which you might know more commonly as snapdragon, and stocks, which are highly scented. Now, when you come and make your bouquet, having a piece of string to hand is really important. And I normally wind off some string before I've even started my bouquet. Cut a length off and then keep it somewhere safe. I quite often just put it around my neck. And then once you've finished your bouquet, you just need to whip the string off and then tie and hold everything in place. One thing you do need to bear in mind when you're making your tied bouquet is that you need to make sure that your stems have clean ends. Not that they're physically clean in the sense of them being dirty, but they don't have any side shoots or leaves coming off the sides. Basically, that means you have all the greenery and all the fluff and all the flower at the top and you just have these bare stems down the bottom. This is Salal, which has come from my local florist. And I've also got some bay, which have grown in my garden. So I've picked off the side shoots of bay and they are all ready to put into my bouquet. I'm right-handed, so what I do is I use my right hand to pick up my piece of plant material and, and then slot it into my bouquet and then twist and turn to keep a rounded shape. And you keep on going with your own greenery if you're practicing or if you're a little bit more accomplished you'll be adding in a mix of flowers as you go along and then you stop when either all your materials have been used or that you can't hold any more in your hand i think that's just about it for me and then using that bit of string You tie off your bouquet and make sure everything is really firm. So you'll see that those new stems that I added in are sticking straight out and then they're longer than the practice bouquet that was made in class. So all you need to do is hold the stems down and then with a sharp pair of scissors or your secateurs, snip them off to length. And that's all ready to go straight into your vase. If you decide to gift your bouquet, it's really nice to be able to wrap it in some brown paper. Not only does the brown paper look really good and it gives a really luxurious look to your bouquet, but it'll also protect the delicate plant material. You'll need two sheets of brown paper to do that, and I'll show you how to do that in the next video clip.
So you can see, I've already got some folds here, but this is the easiest way I find of wrapping the bouquet. So with your paper with a long side facing away from you, you go to fold it in half. But before you match these corners at the end, you just give it a little bit of a twist and then a nice firm crisp. So you'll see you're ended up with one, two, three, four points. And then going to fold the paper in half, halfway between these two middle points across the bottom there. And then fold that down at the corner. And then flip the page over and then fold it roughly in half. And that gives you a roughly triangular piece of paper. You just need another one of those and then you can wrap your bouquet. Before you start, you will need some sticky tape to hand to hold your brown paper in place. So having folded up your sheets of paper, you then unfold them back to that first crease and then put your bouquet onto the paper. And I always make sure that that tied string is sitting in the middle of the piece of paper but just a little bit above, so you won't see it when your bouquet has been wrapped up. And then you'll end up with this really big gap. Don't try and force the pieces of paper together because you'll really squash up your flowers. So when you add in your tape, and I've probably got about a 10 centimeter gap here, you're just holding the two sides of paper together so they don't fall apart. And then you open up your second sheet of paper and you turn over the bouquet so that that gap is face down onto the second sheet of paper and then with two pieces of tape this time fasten the brown paper around and that will give you complete coverage. And doesn't that look absolutely fabulous? Woo! Of course you shouldn't really do that with your flowers. So it just goes to show that if you're starting out and you're wanting to practice your technique for your hand tie bouquet it's a good idea if you've got access to greenery in your garden just to chop down pieces of greenery for free and as you get more confident you can then go out and spend a bit more money on buying flowers as well just to give yourself a lovely hand tie posy to keep for yourself or to arrange to put into a vase at home and the wrapping too that will probably take a little bit of practice but it's really great for when you are gifting flowers to somebody. It protects the flowers in transit, so if anything's going to get knocked, it's going to be the paper around the edges and not the more delicate um, plant material. And of course, it just makes it look even more luxurious because it's been wrapped up. And don't forget, if you'd like to learn how to make your flowers last longer, I'm happy to send you my five tips across five days. All you need to do is to sign up to the link in the show notes underneath the video. And if you want a masterclass on how to make your own tie posy, don't forget to check out the masterclass. And again, I will leave a link to that in the show notes underneath the video. That's all for me for now, and I'll see you next time. And don't forget to join my Facebook group, Flower Start World. And if you do decide to make your own hand tie posy or bouquet and wrap it up, that's the place to share your photographs with me. That's all for me for now, and I'll see you again next time. Thank you.